Hey kids, welcome to the garage. Herald of Havoc is the Quake 2 that we deserve. <laughs> oh, welcome to the garage, kids. I'm so excited to talk about this game, which kind of snuck up on me and uh, caught me off guard while I was playing it, to be totally honest. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize for uh, if my voice sounds a little off. I've been fighting a cold lately. Um, I'm, 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 I'm doing my best over here, but it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a little rough. I've got meds, I've got coffee, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make my way through this, because I really want to talk about Herald of Havoc. Um, the, the developer sent me a message on Twitter, actually, and was just like, hey, I'm so proud of the progress that I've made on this game while it's been in early access, do you want to try it out? Didn't even ask me for a review. Just wanted to know if I wanted to try his game, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Send me a, send me a, send me a key. So I, you know, the disclaimer there it is is I got this game for free to play and to try out, and I was just like so kind of taken aback that there, there wasn't even that request. It was just like you just you just want to play my game, and I was like, yeah, okay. Um, so there's the disclaimer. I got this for free, and my opinion, particularly that this is the Quake 2 we deserve, is my own and is, is completely unprompted. I have not been bribed in any way, shape, or form, although it would be nice if somebody would try to bribe me for a good review at some point, because um, bills are bills are expensive, rent is expensive. Can someone please just try one time Offer, offer me money, please. Um, so Herald of Havoc is a new early access shooter. It was released on December 20th of 2022. The developer Zelda's Zone is a solo dev working on this. Um, there's been quite a bit of content that's been put out. And even as like, I'm recording this right now and I just saw that uh, the level E2M5 was literally just released today. So I'm going to go play that as soon as I'm done with this. Um, but the game is a lot of fun, and it's, it, it's the kind of game that absolutely sneaks up on you. It's a very, very sneaky kind of feeling. At first, when I started playing this, I felt very kind of, okay, you know, this is very simple, this is very straightforward, it's not incredibly difficult, it's a little easy, but that's very misleading, particularly in the beginning. Like, the first couple of missions, the difficulty and the game style are very misleading. It kind of gives you a second to understand what the game is going for, while I kind of lulling you into a false sense of security, if that makes sense. Uh, anyways, so with the game here, the setup is that you are playing like, it, it's we've got this weird, interesting mix of science fiction and uh, medieval aesthetics. So you've got swords, you've got energy weapons, lasers, guns, there's a fucking minotaur that runs out at you at some points. So it's it's a very curious, but very compelling blend of medieval and science fiction aesthetics. And you are playing as the titular Herald of Havoc, or potentially becoming the Herald of Havoc. Um, you get a variety of weapons. Uh, you get, you start off with a laser pistol. It like shoots little like fucking, uh, I, I'm not even sure what they're called, like little like energy blade discs, but then the alt fire is this laser beam that will uh, set enemies on fire for burning damage. And then you also pretty quickly in the first level find what's called the rune blade. And then those two weapons are gonna be your primary weapons for pretty much all of the game. The gimmick here with each level is that you're basically pistol starting every single time. So you'll be accumulating weapons in each level, but then as you reach the next map, all of those will be stripped away and you will be pistol starting with the uh, energy gun and the rune blade. So every map is going to be an all new series of challenges that are not only navigational, but also situational in which you will be presented with certain weapons and then you will be asked to kind of navigate these combat encounters as sort of a puzzle. Like, he, um, for example, the double barrel shotgun, which is called the volcanic shotgun in this game. Um, you know, it's got a really good, like, double barrel spread, but it's also got a really crazy alt fire, which charges up and then shoots a spread of fireballs outward. Um, alt fires are something that you'll see a lot of in this game. The alt fires are also dependent on secondary ammo. 
So it's kind of a really, again, like this is a game that when you look at it, right? Look, you look at the aesthetics in the in the the video that I'm presenting here, and um, it's very streamlined. It's all very smooth, but it's also like very aesthetically pleasing. Everything here is very bright. Everything here is very colorful. Um, so like when you look at a lot of like indie shooters that are coming out, they all have these like very like almost hyper detailed environments and um and then they're darker they're grittier this is very bright like i felt it was almost a little too cartoony for me in the beginning as i was playing it but again it, it sneaks up on you this aesthetic works really well because it's very dedicated to the world that it's building and to the um aesthetics that it wants to prefer like this is just an aesthetic game this is absolutely a very aesthetic game. Um, the controls, the combat encounters, they're all very good. They're all very tight. Um, I felt very good in all the combat encounters that I had. Um, and that's, again, primarily due in part to the uh, the weapons that are on display with their alt fires. So a couple of weapons have an alt fire that requires you to have uh, explosive ammunition. So that volcanic shotgun requires explosive ammunition. Um, there is a, uh, uh, there's a submachine gun. It's very, the submachine gun feels very quake too. All of these weapons feel very quake too, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, but the submachine gun will lob grenades as your secondary alt fire, but you need to have that explosive ammo, um, for the alt fire present. There is a rocket launcher, which isn't so much a rocket launcher so much as it's a fireball launcher, if you will. Like, it does semi-explosive damage, but it, 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 it isn't about blowing things up. It's about creating a explosive sort of shockwave that will set things on fire. So it does minor explosive damage, but really that primary fire is designed to set things on fire, where the secondary, the secondary fire on the flame launcher is designed to really blow things up. It shoots out like kind of like a meteorite that then lands, explodes, throws out debris everywhere, and each piece of that debris then lands and explodes everywhere. There's the shotgun. The standard issue shotgun does not have an alt fire. Um, if you right click, you'll just zoom in for more precise aiming. And this shotgun is probably the most precise shotgun that I have seen in a 3D FPS game since fucking Quake. Like, Quake Shotgun, Doom Shotgun, um, those were the predecessors to modern shotguns in first-person shooters today, which all have a bit more of a spread to them. So they're not as good at a distance, whereas in Doom and in Quake, those shotguns were very accurate from a distance. And here in Herald of Havoc, we see a return to that type of shotgun mechanics. This is a very tight spread it's very good at a distance like i would almost even say like anytime you find the shotgun in a map that should just be your primary weapon that you're rolling with the weapons in this game are absolutely the highlight and feature some of the most creative aspects of the game in and of itself i mean you know when you take a double barreled shotgun and you pair it with an alt fire that shoots out a spread of fireballs you know that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty inventive. But then when you also include something like a chain shotgun, which I've never seen in anything, one level features, a, it's, it's a chain shotgun. It's a chain gun, but it's a shotgun. So you're just like barrel spinning. Think of like full auto from Doom Eternal, except that's just the primary function of the weapon. And if you right click it, it'll shoot off like a quick string of shots. Like it just clears like all four barrels all at once but then but then like the chain gun that you find in the game um in episode two if i'm remembering correctly where that is off the top of my head the chain gun is vicious the chain gun is mean the chain gun has such a great sound effect to it and then the alt fire on the chain gun it fucking change it, it fucking transforms and the function then shoots out a bunch of like like uh elongated not like grenades they look like pipe bombs basically but it shoots out like half a dozen pipe bombs and they'll either explode on contact or they'll land and they'll explode after a moment the the weapons in this game are awesome 
Um, one standout in particular is the shock rifle, which basically is a lightning gun. It's it's like a combination between a lightning gun and a rail gun. Now, what's neat about this weapon, and it took me a second to figure out this functionality, is that if you kill the target that your shot lands on, then the lightning bolt from the shock rifle will chain lightning outward to other enemies. So, if you've got a bunch of weaker enemies in a row, you can potentially take them all out and also land a bit of that chain lightning on a stronger enemy near you. And the enemies in this game are also no fucking joke. Like, they start off pretty meek. They're running around with um, swords, uh, low, ye like, like low-key ballistic weapons and stuff like that, and they progress higher and higher into these like energy weapon wielding enemies and then they get bigger like big fucking tanky giant armor clad dudes who like carry rune swords or carry uh high powered shotguns that they will like like they have an interesting tell the big shotgun guys is they'll like you know they'll pump the shotgun and you'll see this glow around their weapon and if you are anywhere within their line of sight, then they will hit you with that. Like, you gotta basically, you get this quick little tell saying, hey, this guy's about to shoot, and then you gotta find some cover. The enemies are very interesting, and there's a good variety here, and the game will throw a lot of enemies at you, and it isn't just about the volume, but the variety within the volume. That's what makes this game so sweaty. Which is good, because the levels are really fucking short sometimes. Like, you can clear out most of these levels in five, six minutes, maybe ten minutes, depending on the combat encounters. Despite them being so short, it is the combat encounters, the puzzles within the combat encounters, that's what makes them so memorable, that's what makes them so interesting. And to that extent, that is one of the reasons why having to start with the energy pistol and the rune blade every map makes the game feel very unique despite the levels being so short because you're always stripped of that power and then the each map is built around the mechanics of the weapons that it wants you to have that it will give you within each level and, and that's very cool now one thing though that i i kind of lament within that design even though i do enjoy it is that there are some really interesting weapons here some great weapons that you then you don't really get to play with very much like the chain shotgun that i just mentioned the chain shotgun is really only present for one map and then you don't see it again um un unless it is hidden within a secret of which this game has many 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 secrets and i'm not a secret hunter i've only found like uh, less than a handful but there are many secrets in this game, so people who are dedicated secret hunters are probably going to have an even better time with this game than I have. Um, but I still, I lament, like, I've only seen the chain gun once, I've only seen the chain shotgun once. There is a really unique weapon in the levels that have been slowly dropping for episode 2. Episode 1 is fully out, and episode 2 is slowly dropping level by level. But there's this great, it's like a necromancer scythe, and what you do is you swing it, and when you kill an enemy, they are immediately revived by the scythe. Like, if you kill an enemy with the scythe, they are revived and they become your minion. So, like, you're killing a bunch of dudes with the scythe, and then they're following you around, and then they're attacking other enemies. Now, if you kill an enemy with a regular ballistic weapon, then you can switch to the scythe and then target their corpse, bring them to life, and then they become your minion again. Which is, wow, what a mechanic. What a mechanic. It's also only been in one level so far, so I hope that that weapon makes a return appearance like i hope the chain shotgun makes a return appearance like i hope the chain gun makes a return appearance so there is it's i i enjoy the method that this game is choosing to go with its design um i i'm really enjoying how it wants you to play the game by forcing you to you know start every level from scratch and then figure out the combat puzzles by picking up different weapons and finding di these different weapons in each level to aid you with all the combat puzzles that it presents but it does kind of blue ball you with some of the better weapons in that you get it for like one time and then 
you don't get to carry it over into the next level. Like I, I, it's a, it's a little critique. Obviously, the game is going to ask you. I should back that up. You should go into the game prepared to play the game the way it wants to be played. It is presenting this. The developers have a vision and have a goal. It is hard not to feel blue balled by the fact that you can't take these awesome weapons just every map with you. But I do enjoy the experience of running through a map and going, okay, what am I going to get this time? What am I going to get this time? Now, earlier, yes, I did say this is the Quake 2 we deserve. And I really want to elaborate on that because look at the aesthetics. Look at the kind of like weird sci-fi gray hues and then the like very intense reds. There's like red lasers. There's red um, electronic displays. And then you look at the shape of the shotgun itself, the shape of the double-barreled shotgun, the construction and textures and the levels. This is one of the most Quake feeling games that I have played since Quake, like walking into this and playing this, the general aesthetic value and the gameplay feel and the weapons themselves all feel like they came straight from Quake. Like this is obviously not on the same level as id Software's design. No one can do what id Software did back in the '90s, and that's not a um, that that that's not a critique against the developers here. But this is the most Quake feeling game that I have played since Quake. Like it's very obvious that Quake is a huge inspiration on this game. It shows and it feels like it, and it, like this to me is such a natural evolution. From the original Quake, you've got that medieval style mixed with sci-fi, sci-fi, oh fuck, the cold's getting to me, sci-fi influences, and this this really does feel like it's just a little left of the Strog War in Quake 2, while maintaining some of the same aesthetic values as the first Quake, and that to me is why I feel this is so far the Quake 2 that we deserve because this feels so much like the first quake in design in um in presentation and just in the mechanics of the weapons and in the presentation of the world itself this is a lot of fun now it, it, again it is fairly straightforward it is fairly simplistic some of the maps you're gonna get through really really fast because it's really easy and I, i'm not the biggest fan of being blue balled with certain weapons and not being really given the opportunity to carry them over into other levels but the level design here is also so varied every map is very specifically and intentionally structured with like environmental puzzles key puzzles combat puzzles Herald of Havoc is something that is shaping up to be really special, and um, with each new map of Episode 2 that has dropped so far, I have found to be even more interesting and to be even more engaging than what's currently out in Episode 1. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm literally recording this right now. Episode E2M5 just dropped. I'm going to go play that as soon as I'm done recording here. Um, I might even uh, throw in some footage of that um, w with this video. But yeah, kids, Herald of Havoc is 20 bucks on Steam. There's going to be a link in the description below. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm having more fun than I thought I was going to when I first booted up the game. Um, the soundtrack is killer. The gameplay is killer. Like, it's very simplistic and straightforward. But my god, does it do what it does really, really well. It's just fun. It's just fun. And honestly, at the end of the day, if you're gonna pay 20 bucks for a game in early access, you gotta have fun with it. And I'm having a lot of fun with this game. Well, thanks for putting up with me and my... Uh, uh, gross cold voice. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing some more early access content and presenting it out here in the garage with you kids. Um, yep, that's it. That's it for me for now. Um, I'm going to tell you to stay hydrated and I'm going to go get hydrated too, because I really need to drink a lot of water right now. <laughs> uh, stay safe out there, kids. I'll see you next time.